One of the things that I absolutely love about our sport is that every time you go out, you can do something new. Case in point, we're in a brand new state. We're in Down East Maine, fishing for a brand new species, landlocked Atlantic salmon in the rivers. And we're doing a new technique. The ice is just off the lakes and we're fishing for pre-spawn smallmouth bass. This brand new adventure starts right now on the new fly fisher. Fish. The new Fly Fisher is supported by Maine Office of Tourism, Orvis Fly Fishing, Trout Unlimited, Rio Products, Oscar Blues Brewery, Global Rescue, Adipose Boatworks. Welcome to Weatherby's Lodge, located down East Maine. There's a feeling you get when you drive into the historical Weatherby's Lodge, a feeling of grandiose. Not in the extravagant meaning, but one of big opportunity, big adventure, and of course, the chance to catch big fish. The west branch of the St. Croix River is named Grand Lake Stream. Both the village and the stream itself has a storied past, as does the lodge. Since 1902, anglers have been traveling to and fishing Grand Lake Stream and the rivers and lakes in the surrounding area. Well, we are at Weatherby's Lodge to do a little early season exploration as well. We experience history in search of the species those early anglers coveted so. First, we're exploring the new. We're on the hunt for pre-spawn smallmouth bass in the lakes and rivers in the area. Then we step back in time and hit Grand Lake Stream for the fabled Wananiche, or landlocked Atlantic salmon. Jeff McAvoy is our host and guide for this down east Maine adventure. He immediately loads us up and we hit the backwater in search of pre-season smallmouth bass. Joining me on this trip to Maine is good friend, Tom Rosenbauer. Down East Maine is cold, cold and the water is running high. This will definitely dictate the style of presentation with which we choose to start. Water temperatures are in the low 40s. As with all fly fishing in less than ideal environmental conditions, low and slow is the ticket. And you must fish it as you find it. Fish. Now that's the ticket. The slower you go, the more apt you are to get a pickup. And it's actually painful how slow you have to bring these, these flies in. I went into bass, sweet. So we pulled into this, nice fish. We pulled into this back little bay and um, there's a little bit of moving water here. Now, again, it's springtime. The ice has just come off the water about two weeks ago, which tells me that the smelt runs probably over, but the pre-spawn has just begun. So this is my second or third cast in this big pool and bass number one, here we go. Now, it's not a giant, it's a little, a little tail walker. Um, yeah, I've got a 2X tippet on here tied to a uh, black and olive zuddler with a cone head, low and slow in this moving water and this bass came and picked it up. Hit it pretty hard actually, surprised me. Gotcha. Down East Maine, Weatherby's Lodge. Little smallmouth to start the day. 
Can't complain about that at all. Great fish. In moving water, they fight like crazy. So mending line is not just for trout fishing. When you're river smallmouth fishing and it's early season like this and the fish are close to the bottom and moving slowly, you're gonna also have to mend line to get that fly nice and deep in the current. So don't think it's just for, for stream trout. Um, you need to, if you're gonna fish early season smallmouth, you need to learn how to mend your line as well. Fish. Nope. <laughs> nice jumping chub. Nice jumping fish. Nice. So one of the things that is important when fishing moving water like this is you do need to get your flies deep and you need to get them deep quickly. So I'm casting upstream and then putting an upstream mend in and counting that fly down and getting it as close to the bottom as I can before I start my retrieval. And then slowly bringing that fly back to me and these fish are cruising it and picking it up. We decide to head upstream and do some walk and wade fishing in the river. We come across moving water coming in and leaving a big bay. Tom and I are having a really, really good time here in this sloughy bay. Um, and I have a, a pretty good idea why this is happening the way it is. There's a ton of bass in here. Um, and as you can see, there's the main river is coming straight down the chute and the current is being pushed up against this front wall. Now, the current is being split into two directions. The main river, which is continuing down out into the main lake. And then there's this giant back eddy here where I'm assuming that a lot of the bait fish and a lot of the bugs are being washed into. And then there's the bass are stacked up here, kind of just waiting for things to drift by. Um, we stepped in here and I mean, caught a pile of fish, no real giants, but it's areas like this where bait can gather, where water might be a little bit warmer, where you're gonna find smallmouth. No matter what temperature the water, smallmouth bass are always opportunistic feeders. In moving water, as well as cold water, the fish will hold in high percentage areas where they can feed with minimal effort. Look for inside bends of moving water where slack water meets faster water. The fish will sit in the slow water at the head of the structure, waiting for food to come down the seam. Look for outside bends, again where faster water meets slow. Bubble lines are a great indicator of where food will travel. Look for deep pools, allowing time for your fly to sink to their level, and also consider the outflow of a pool where fish can face upstream, with minimal effort lying in wait to ambush unsuspecting food washing out of the pool. The water is cold. Uh, ice was in here about two weeks ago and these fish are really lethargic. Their metabolism has not warmed up, as, as you say. I've got a unique situation where I've got some moving water in front of me. I've got a bunch of bushes in behind, so I need to get my fly out and deep quickly. How am I gonna do that? Well, very easy. I'm gonna do a roll cast, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually throw some line at the roll cast upon the end, like a reach, not unlike this. that mend, upstream mend, will allow that fly to sink by the time it gets perpendicular to me. And then I can start my retrieval, super slow, super close to the bottom in search of smallmouth bass. Sweet, feels like a good one too. Again? If he wants to take the drag against the current, there's no problem in giving it to him. How do you like that?
Oh, nice smallmouth. So he was right in the back on the inside here in this kind of slow, swirly, slack water. The same kind of water we've been catching these guys with a slow retrieve in this cold water. That's a nice fish. Buddy, gotcha! Beautiful smallmouth. There we go, there's the fish of the day. All right. So I walked up here from around the other side of this bay to where the slew water meets the current. And I figured that there'd be some bigger bass hanging out here, waiting to ambush the bait that's coming down the, uh, down the main river. And sure enough, this guy ate. Oh, nice one. Nice fish. Let's see if I can bring him to hand and take a look. Got him. All right. So look for the areas where slow current meets faster, where there's ambush points for fish to sit and wait. Lie in wait for food. And you too hook up with great main smallmouth bass out of Weatherby's. Good fish, great fish. Weatherby's has actually been an institution in the fishing world for a long time. I mean, the original property um, building was uh, constructed in 1870, became a fishing, dedicated fishing and hunting lodge starting around 1900. Um, it's had very consistent ownership and um, People from all over the world have been here. Grand Lake Stream is well known for being one of the uh, four watersheds in the lower 48 to have landlocked salmon indigenous. Uh, and since uh, you know the early 1900s, the smallmouth bass have been really important to this uh, community as far as guiding and summertime business. Fishing is great. I mean, we have awesome fly fishing on Grand Lake Stream. It's fly fishing only water. Uh, it's a seasonal fishery, spring and fall generally. Um, but we have dozens of lakes that we fish for multiple species. Kind of, I mean, I think our smallmouth fishery is probably as good as it gets in, in, uh, in the Northeast for sure. Uh, the landlocked salmon, I think, are actually fun. They, they take like trout. Um, they'll take dry flies, um, they take nymphs, they take streamers. But the nice thing about the salmon is they jump and they're known as uh, the leaper in the old days. Uh, they take a fly and they'll jump, and sometimes they'll jump six, eight times when the water warms up a little bit, and they're jumping four feet out of the water. They'll jump right over your head. So you never know what's gonna happen. They're explosive, um, they're a lot of fun, and, uh, and a lot of people have never fished for them. So it's kind of an eye-opening experience for folks when they fish for them. After a great couple of days of bass fishing, we decide to switch gears and hit Grand Lake Stream in search of landlocked Atlantic salmon. Joining Tom and me is great friend Pete Kutzer. So there's three of us fishing landlocked salmon here on this stream uh, out of Weatherby's right now. Um, I'm swinging a um, bead-headed woolly bugger uh, with one piece of shot. Pete's swinging a trout spay uh, with an, a traditional Atlantic salmon fly, and Tom here is at the base of the falls and he's actually fishing a trout rig uh, so a um, a fly with a nymph dropper so we'll see what these fish want and uh, then we'll make our adaptations so i'm nymph fishing up in here for landlocked salmon we're at grand lake stream in maine and um, i forgot my streamer box so i have to go back and get it later but i figured i might as well try some nymphs in here and I've been picking up fish in this water right in here where it's kind of uniform. And then, um, you know, when you get down into this stuff down here where, it, where the water seems to boil, I never find fish holding very well in that kind of water. So I'm trying to concentrate in this more uniform water as opposed to the water just below it, and it seems to be working out. 
we quickly learn that fish are most interested in nymphs under an indicator. All right. My first landlocked took the nymph. There's always a little bit of lack of confidence with depth when you first start where, as to where you are and where you need to be until that indicator goes down. You know you're in the right area. Look at this. All right. 5X tippet. He's got himself wrapped around. Amazing. Such fun. So I saw this salmon moving up this, this sandy flat here and uh, threw a nymph in front of him and he took it. Boy, that's uh, you know, not very often, at least for me, you get to sight fish a landlocked salmon. Must be fresh from the lake if he was moving up because he was moving up through here pretty quickly. I could see him. Then I lost sight of him and uh, threw, threw it ahead of me and sure enough, he took it. A fisherman, uh, a fisherman had told us as we were coming down that he was using a little betis nymph, little olive nymph, so I figured, well, he was doing well on it. Local knowledge is always worthwhile. See you, buddy. my god he ate it oh my god right in front of my rod tip he ate it sight fishing landlocked salmon this is a I think it's a pretty good one too he looked big in the water anyways and he ate the I think he ate the little beta sniff too that fish I want to run through the setup that I've got here nymphing for these landlocked salmon here at Weatherby's Lodge. Uh, it's really very quite simple. I've got a, um, an eight foot tapered leader uh, with a piece of shot above the first knot that goes directly to 4X tippet. I've got about four feet of that to my point fly, which is called a golden retriever, a bead headed uh, woolly bugger type uh, fly, local pattern. I've got another 12 to 16 inches of 5x tippet material tied to a size 14 prince nymph so that's it with an indicator adjustable airlock you can adjust your depth to whatever they're telling you they uh they want and uh, this setup is deadly for landlock atlantics Cool, you know, he gave that spot a rest. He moved downstream a little bit, walked back up on it, and there you go. The front we've been watching is now upon us. Here comes the weather. You know, these days there's no reason not to go fishing, no matter what the weather is. I mean, with modern rainwear, insulated underwear, and a wool hat, um, you can stay pretty darn comfortable even in a miserable day like this. It's 40 degrees, it's windy, it's raining, but there's nobody else on this beautiful pool on Grand Lake Stream in Maine. This is a prime part of the season and probably the best pool on the river. There's nobody else here but us. The interesting about fishing these Atlantic salmon, these landlocks, is, you know, they turn on and off. Sometimes, you know, minute to minute, 
10 minutes every 10 minutes or whatever, whatever their cycle may be, they'll actually bite, they'll eat, they'll move around, they get swirled around in this current and then they'll get settled again and, and it comes in waves. So you don't need to move around a lot here, but maybe just you know, play with the waiting game. I've got a woolly bugger and a member 16, 18 Prince nymph on. So we're covering the water column and it's just a matter of time, I think, before these fish will turn on. Yo! Nice fish, Tom. Out in the faster water. See, it is worth it fishing in miserable weather. This is something that'll warm you up. I feel warmer already. This fish took a uh, big, big ginger colored stonefly nymph. I have a smaller one on too, but fish took the big nymph. Ah, that's a pretty salmon. That's beauty. Oh. Yeah, and Mark's got another one fish. upstream there. Like I was saying earlier, you know, these fish move in cycles. Tom just hooked one. And now it looks like I've got one. Took the the prince nymph, the little the little nymph. And this nasty weather is great for fishing one a niche. Landlocked salmon. Oh, it's a good one too. Maybe we're into them again. Now I got 4X tippet from the leader to the first fly and then 5X tippet after that to the nymph. Oh, there he goes, took my nymph. Got the best part of that one. Good stuff. Oh, beautiful, wow. He's actually taking line off the reel. Got a fairly light tippet on here. I've only got 5X. So I have to be careful. Looks like he wrapped the line around him too. I want to see which fly he took. I'm fishing, I'm fishing two nymphs and uh, he took the upper fly. Oh, another jump. Well, it's beginning to be the beginning of the end of our trip to Weatherby Lodge here in Down East Maine. And I'll tell you, we've had an unbelievable time here hosted by Jeff McAvoy. Um, salmon and early spring smallmouth bass really can't be beat. Struggled today, but that's the way it goes. Listen, I want to thank you for watching The New Fly Fisher. My name is Mark Melnick. Remember, adventure is out there. All you need to do is go and find it. And what better way than to do it with a fly rod in your hand. From everybody here at The New Fly Fisher, thanks for watching. We'll see you down in May. Hi, I'm Tom Rosenbauer. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this and you want to see more, subscribe and you can get all our weekly uploads. The new fly fisher is supported by Maine Office of Tourism, Orvis Fly Fishing, Trout Unlimited, Real Products, Oscar Blues Brewery, Global Rescue, Adipose Boatworks,